Hi, everyone, and welcome to OACAC's Virtual College Exploration. We're excited to have you joining us today and hope that you'll learn a lot during this 45 minute session. During this presentation, your camera and microphone will be off. However, you will be able to ask questions using the Q&A feature on your screen. As a reminder, you're able to review a recording of this session and sign up for others at oacac.org. At this time, I will turn it over to Duke Kungshan University. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen here just a moment. Pull up my PowerPoint. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, well, welcome. My name is Lori Bregner and I'm a Global Recruitment Officer with Duke Kunshan University. Um, Duke Kunshan is a partnership with Duke University and we're located in China. So given the fact that we're meeting virtually today instead of in person at a college fair, um, we know that obviously there are world events that are incredibly challenging. Obviously the pandemic, um, climate change, the environment, politics, the economy. We know that we are experiencing so many critical um, global challenges. And so Duke Kunshan University was built to be an answer to that to um, provide an education for students to find solutions to these challenges. So we know that these global challenges require a global education. Um, just by the fact that you're here in this session, hopefully you've thought about studying in another country for college. And studying in another country for college can really help you become a more engaged global citizen. It can instill a broader understanding of other cultures in you. And also it can really help you prepare for international careers. So as I said, Duke Kunshan University is an answer to, to this type of education that we need to address these issues. We're a research-oriented liberal arts and sciences university, and we are for students who really want to make a meaningful difference in the world. And on the left here, there is um, a picture of our beautiful campus, as you can see. It's a bit different than many colleges you may be, um, you may have toured in Ohio or other parts of the United States, and that instead of having a grassy quad in the middle, we have our beautiful lake here. And then this is an overview of the campus. So as I said, we are a partnership with Duke University in North Carolina. Um, and as I'm sure you may know, Duke University is consistently ranked as one of the top universities in the United States and the world. And as a Duke Kunshan student, you'd have the opportunity to study on two campuses. You would go away to college and spend most of your time on our Kunshan campus that I just showed you in the last slide. But then you would have the opportunity to spend a semester and then possibly summers at Duke University in North Carolina. You'll earn two bachelor's degrees, one from Duke Kunshan University, so you would have that Chinese international diploma, and then a regular diploma from Duke University. So you would join two alumni networks, um, two very powerful alumni networks. One would be the Duke Alumni Network, which currently has over 170,000 members all over the globe. And then Duke Kunshan University doesn't have any alumni yet because we actually just started welcoming undergrads in fall 2018. So we have freshmen, sophomores, and juniors um, attending Duke Kunshan. But once we graduate our first class, um, you would be able, after you graduate, um, to go alongside them and have those, um, you know, classmates and friends that you made um, and have those connections all over the world. So we like to say that Duke Kunshan University is your gateway to Asia and the rest of the world. Here's a map that shows you the pretty quick flight times to many other really exciting locations that are nearby. So to get to Duke Kunshan University, you would fly into Shanghai Pudong Airport. Um, they do have direct flights from Chicago O'Hare. Um, and then you're just around two hours to Beijing. From there, you could take another short um, bus trip and could go to the Great Wall of China. 
Um, you're only a little bit over two hours to Seoul, South Korea, um, around three and a half hours to Tokyo and Japan. And then our students even like to sometimes take long weekends or go on breaks to go to places like Thailand or Bali. So within China, Duke Kunshan was built in a really strategic location. As I said, we're very near Shanghai. So um, that is obviously the largest city in China. And then we're also near Suzhou, which is um, about the size of, of New York City. So we're, depending on where you are in Shanghai, if you take a, um, a train ride, it can be around 20 minutes and you'd go right into the Kunshan train station. So why did we pick Quinchon for where Duke and China wanted to come together to build a university? Well, we picked Quinchon because it's a growing um, hub for high tech research and manufacturing. There are a lot of um, startups there, technology companies, um, lots of construction. Um, and it, you might even liken it to a place like Silicon Valley in California. As I said, it's connected by high speed train to Shanghai and Suzhou. And as for the size, it is considered a small city in China with only 1.7 million people. So um, Duke Kunshan is located within Jiangsu province in China, which is actually one of the, uh, it's the wealthiest province in China, and also the greenest, meaning that there are a lot of beautiful forests, and as pictured here, water towns. So what's really exciting about the location for Duke Kunshan is that, as you see on this slide, you will be in a very dynamic and growing city where you're experiencing modern China and having this very futuristic um, feeling within Kunshan. But then you also are very close to these water towns where you can go and explore ancient China and explore the world's oldest civilization. So again, um, our proximity to Shanghai is really fantastic. Here's a beautiful photo of um, the Bund in Shanghai with the beautiful dazzling skyline. Again, only about 20 minutes from our campus by train. And again, remember, because of the name Duke Kunshan, if you do attend Duke Kunshan, you'll study in China, but then you'll also have that opportunity to study in Durham, North Carolina on the Duke University campus. And here's a beautiful photo of the Duke campus in the fall here, you see the, the gorgeous leaves changing and the, um, the Gothic architecture. And Durham is also a really fantastic location on the east coast of the United States, and it's a great place to, um, to study. It is a hub for higher education, so obviously Duke is there, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, which is the nation's oldest public university, is headquartered there. It's also, like Quinshan, a hub for technology and research. Um, so one of the, the country's largest um, research firms, uh, Research Triangle International, is headquartered there. And then and as far as its proximity to other um, great places on the East Coast, it's um, around a four hour drive to Washington, DC. And then you can hop on a plane from Raleigh-Durham Airport and um, fly up to New York City in less than an hour. So Duke Kunshan University has a really engaging academic environment. Um, so I've already told you this is a very unique opportunity for college where you study on two campuses. And one of the questions that I get asked most frequently is, do I need to speak Chinese in order to attend Duke Kunshan? And the answer is no, not initially. So um, Mandarin language proficiency is not required for admissions, but you do have to be willing to learn Mandarin once you arrive. So we do have two years of required Mandarin language study um, built into the curriculum. Now, if you have already been studying Mandarin Chinese in high school, or if you're um, a heritage speaker, um, we do have proficiency tests that you can take when you arrive so you can be placed into the appropriate higher level. 
So as I shared before, Duke Kung Shan University just opened its doors to undergraduates in the fall of 2018. So we have a pretty small student body at this point, but that's really advantageous because it means that there's a very personalized learning environment. We have discussion-based classrooms. So instead of um, being in a huge lecture hall, maybe at a place like Ohio State where you're with you know, 100 other students, um, you're sitting around a table with just a couple of other students students and the professor. I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, you also have complete academic freedom at Duke Kung Shan, which is really um, important knowing that you are studying in China. So perhaps some of you have heard of what's called the Great Firewall in China, which is China's um, uh, internet restrictions. And as a Duke Kung Shan student, you would be able to completely bypass these restrictions because we would issue you a university VPN. Um, and so that anything that you could look at on the Duke University Library um, in North Carolina, you would be able to access from Quinchon. And as I said, we have a very personalized learning environment, and that's because we have a really small student to faculty ratio. So it's currently seven to one. And our uh, faculty are incredibly interested in investing in you and mentoring you. We select um, top academics from their fields, from they come over from Duke University, from China, and then from all over the world. And um, it's, it's really not unusual for professors to do things like invite their classes over to their apartments for dinner. Um, it's just a really um, fantastic, um, very uh, intimate learning environment where everyone gets to know one another really well. So one of the unique hallmarks of Duke Kung Shan University is that we have a very unique course schedule. So we have what we call a 4-1 academic week. So we have classes Monday through Thursday in the classroom and then Fridays are reserved for education outside of the classroom. So that means that on Fridays, our students do things like um, maybe take the train into Shanghai, maybe pursue an internship, um, maybe they go on a long weekend where they travel to another place in Asia, and go on a field trip with one of their classes. It really just depends. And then we also have an innovative semester schedule. So many of you, if you have siblings or friends that have already um, gone off to college here in the United States, um, you're probably pretty familiar with the uh, semester schedule um, that runs generally August through December and then January to May. And as a Duke Kung Shan student, you would still go away to school during those roughly those same times. But instead of taking four to five classes throughout the entire semester, you'd have two um, smaller terms. So you'd have two seven week um, sessions. And within each of those sessions, you would take only two to three classes. <clears throat> so this is really advantageous because it allows you to really focus in on the subjects that you're learning. So Duke Kun Shan University, um, before we started welcoming our undergraduates in 2018 for several years, we actually, um, and we still do, we have graduate programs um, in environmental science and global health. And we house several research institutes on campus. Um, so we have a global health research institute, an environmental science research institute, a center for the study of contemporary China, um, a humanities research institute. And so our undergraduate students already have really taken advantage of these hubs for research. And 20% of our current undergraduates have already participated in research with a professor. So just like I talked about in the beginning, they're already addressing um, our critical current global challenges. For instance, I know that one of our students this summer was working with a global health professor and they were looking at um, infant and maternal outcomes um, from COVID COVID-19. Um, another student was working with the um, Environmental Science Research Institute. They were looking at quality of air emissions in China. 
We also have a program that is research focused called the Signature Work Program. And with that, you would be paired with a faculty member. And starting your junior year, you would start putting together um, a project that's outcomes focused. Um, it may be a research project, maybe it's um, a business plan. Um, and that means that you have something when you graduate that you can show to future employers or graduate schools. So we have three academic divisions, natural sciences, social sciences, and arts and humanities. And this is a list of all of our undergraduate majors um, that are um, underlined here. And then underneath, you can see our interdisciplinary tracks that you can choose. So because we are an interdisciplinary liberal arts and sciences university, um, you do take a variety of courses and core courses, you actually don't have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year so that you can take a sampling of different subjects um, to find what you're really passionate about. So Duke Kunshan University has really impressive facilities. Um, we have everything that you would need um, to really um, be a successful student. So we have amazing teaching research and artificial intelligence labs, obviously group and independent study spaces. Um, this is a picture um, from one of the labs in our newest building. It's called the Innovation Building, um, which really is a fantastic place for conducting research. And then um, we are a LEED certified campus. So what that means is that um, all of our buildings are built to green and sustainable environmentally friendly building codes. And we are the only LEED certified campus in China. So as a Duke Kunshan student, you would also have all of the different student supports and services um, on campus to um, help round out your experience. So we have undergraduate advising, career services, um, residence life, which I'll talk about in a few slides, um, lots of different clubs and organizations and athletics. And then of course we have um, counseling and psychological services because we know that even if you're going away to college, um, you know, 20 minutes from where you've grown up. Um, college is a big transition and we especially want to be there with extra support for you as you adjust to living and learning in another part of the world. So 100% of our students actually live on campus. Um, we offer roommate matching and try to work with your preferences. Um, some of our students even um, will become resident assistants so they can have some leadership opportunities within the dorms. And then I would say from what I know of our students, many of them have said that they met their best friends in their residence hall. So it's a, it's a great place um, to socialize and to, to really get close to your classmates. So 100% of Duke Kunshan students do live on campus and we have several different living options. So as you can see here in the top right, we have traditional dorms, although they may um, perhaps look a lot nicer and newer and more modern than many of the dorms I've personally seen on campuses in the US. And that's where you would have one roommate and then you would share a, a common bathroom with um, other uh, rooms on the hall. We also have a suite style living um, opportunity where you would have a single room within a suite and then there would be one or two other um, single rooms attached where you would share a bathroom with just those few other students and then you would have this um, living and study area so almost imagine as though you're living in your own apartment or condo. We also have a third option and again because we are such a new university and we are we have a lot of construction um, but we also are adding more and more students each year. Um, we have some overflow housing off campus which is university sponsored. It's in a luxury hotel. It's called the Scholars Hotel and it's just about a five minute shuttle ride from campus and it runs all day long. So that's another option. 
We also have dining halls and cafes and also places for students to cook. Um, just an antidote, we, as I will share with you later in the presentation, we have an incredibly international and diverse student body. So a lot of the students love sharing each other's cultures um, by cooking for each other. So for instance, I know that um, several of our Italian students, especially um, love making pasta and other Italian dishes um, for their classmates. So that's there as well. So there's a lot to do on campus outside of academics. We have over 40 clubs and organizations. They range from things like a language club where you would um, every week they have a new menu and you can pick off the menu. Maybe one week you want to go and learn a little bit of French. Maybe the next week you want to go and learn a little bit of Russian to things like fencing, to entrepreneurship club. Um, we just have so many clubs that students have started. And because we're a new university, if you don't see a club that's already been established that you want to start, you can very easily work with our student affairs department and they will help you get that off the ground so that you can participate. And then in the future, um, Duke Kunshan students can um, continue on the legacy with that club. One of the coolest um, things that I think that our student affairs office um, leads is something called DKU Quest. And these are school sponsored trips to world heritage sites around China. So here's a picture of some of our students climbing the Great Wall on the right here. We have some of our students in Tibet. Um, so this is a really wonderful opportunity to really um, explore. So for those of you who are interested in athletics, um, we do have a lot of options. We have physical education classes. We have a really beautiful um, uh, workout center that overlooks our lake here, um, fitness classes, personal training, um, and then a lot of intramural sports that our students have started. So some of the most popular intramural sports are basketball and soccer. But again, just like the clubs, if there's a um, an intramural sport that has not yet been um, started on campus, you can easily work with our athletic director to get that up and running. So um, I know that I've shown you the larger area. I've shown you Kunshan and Shanghai and even um, what it would be like for your semester on the Duke campus in Durham. But I wanted to show you um, what is available to you very, very close to the Kunshan campus. So Duke Kunshan University, um, from maybe what you saw from the overview that I showed you at the beginning, um, it is surrounded by greenery, and forests. So it's in the city of Kunshan, but it's not directly in the downtown area. However, because um, the area is becoming developed so quickly, in part due to the university, um, there is a lot of construction. So actually right off the campus, just a few um, a few um, blocks away, actually just across the street, you can walk to it. They built a European style shopping village called Dayu Bay. So as you can see here, they have lots of restaurants, um, coffee shops, sometimes they have um, fireworks over the bay here. So that is available to you just by walking across the street. Um, Dayu Bay also houses our student center, which is called the Blue Oasis because um, uh, Duke Kunshan's mascot is the Blue Dragon. Maybe you've heard of the Blue Devil with <laughs> the Blue Devils with Duke University. And this is a space where students can come and hang out with each other, study. Um, sometimes we have events and concerts there as well. And then I also just show you a picture of what is considered a run of the mill mall in China. So we have malls in Quinchon that you can go to. Um, a lot of our students will um, either take public transportation or maybe take a Didi, which is the um, Chinese equivalent of Uber, and take a few minutes and go into the city center, um, go out to dinner. Um, a favorite activity of many of our students is going out to sing karaoke together. 
So back to academics and your student experience at Duke Kunshan, we have undergraduate advising available. Um, so if you need extra tutoring or language help, um, or if you want to go into um, medicine, law, or another type of professional school, we have um, personalized guidance for you. You would have um, an academic mentor, as I said, and you would also be working on a faculty member one on one with a signature project. We also have an incredible career services office, um, which offers career counseling, job search training, internship resources. So we actually have an internship fair that on campus where um, they bring in different employers who are specifically looking to recruit to Kunjan students to become interns. Friday career tracks where you might go out into Kunshan or Shanghai and shadow an employee. Um, and then other corporate and networking events. And I just want to take a moment here to brag on our students and um, the amazing internships they've already been placed in. On the right here, we have one of our students um, from Kazakhstan, and she was able to intern with Ernst & Young. I know that some of our other students have had internships with other top consulting firms like McKinsey and um, Deloitte. Um, we've had students intern at Shanghai Disney, um, one intern with the National Academy of Sciences in China working on ancient fossils. So as you can see, there's so many different opportunities. And also, um, the really, really powerful thing is, is that as I'm sure you know, um, China is poised to be the world's um, most powerful country and um, really to, to go into any field in the modern world, it's really important to be able to um, understand Chinese culture and business practices. Um, so this is such a, um, a wonderful opportunity to really have a competitive edge um, when you go into the workforce having interned in China. So as I said before, we have counseling and psychological services available for you just to make sure that you're adjusting to college life and life abroad the best you can. We have different individual counseling services, um, different workshops and support groups. As you can see here, we actually even do things like bring in therapy puppies um, for finals week. Um, so we have a lot of options for helping you um, stay really healthy mentally. So I've been sharing a lot of information with you about our location, um, living on campus, academics, and now I want to turn it over and just have you hear from some of our current students and um, have them share why they chose Duke Kunshan University. So this student, Peter, he's actually from North Carolina. Um, he was interning at Duke University in a lab when he was in high school. And so that's how he first heard about Duke's new joint partnership with Duke Kunshan. So he applied, he decided to attend, and he said he decided to attend because he found a sense of adventure from the other students who were going to attend and also the sense of helpfulness from the faculty. So remember me talking about in earlier slides, the fact that it's a small student body and very mentorship focused. And this student named Reika is from Japan and she chose Duke Kunshan because she wanted to pursue global health um, in an undergraduate education from different perspectives within a unique liberal, liberal arts program. And she also said DKU um, could provide an international experience with a tight community of students and faculty that no other university could. So we have um, a very um, diverse and international student body. We have students who hold over 50 different nationalities and they come from six continents. So literally um, our students come from every corner of the globe. 
So what do those students look like? What are we looking for as we build, um, as we build the Duke Kung Chan community? So we are looking for students who are obviously very adventurous. They're willing to um, explore and, and attend a brand new university in another country. Um, students who are open-minded, who are um, independent thinkers, very globally minded, and highly engaged and fascinated with China and the world. And of course, um, we are looking for students who are very highly accomplished and high achieving academically. So just to talk a little bit more about um, what our students look like academically, um, I'll show you the class of 2024 profile for um, admitted students. And we had a very highly selective acceptance rate of 17%. Um, and the SAT scores, the middle 50% for our um, accepted students was between a 1410 and a 1510. So as you can see, um, very, very high standards between a 32 and a 34 for the ACT, which I know a lot of Midwestern students will take the ACT. And then the average um, GPA for accepted students was a 3.9 out of a four scale. Um, so another thing to note is that our students are really globally minded and multilingual. So over 80% of our accepted students speak two or more languages, and then almost 50% of them speak three or more languages. And as I said, our students come from all over the world. They come from six continents and 32 countries. The breakdown of the student population is that around 70% of the students are from China and the rest are from the United States and all over the world. So as in, um, as a, if you are a US citizen and you attend Duke Kun Chan, you would be considered an international student. And so we are seeing interest from all parts of the world, growing interest from places like Morocco, Kazakhstan, um, Latin America. So just imagine yourself at Duke Kun Chan, you would literally have friends from all over the world. So another um, aspect of researching colleges that I know is really important for students and families is looking at the estimated tuition and fees and then any associated scholarships. So the current cost of attendance for Duke Kun Chan, the tuition cost is similar to what is set for the Duke University tuition in North Carolina. It's approximately 55,000 US dollars per academic year. And then, of course, there are other associated costs with um, having your having an academic year at Duke Kun Chan, ranging from health insurance to student fees, books, living expenses, so your housing, food, travel back and forth from China. And so altogether, we um, we estimate that you would want to um, be able there. It, the cost is 76, around 76,000 US dollars. Um, now, keep in mind that very few students pay that full amount. 80% of our incoming international students receive some sort of aid. So we would automatically consider you for our merit-based scholarships just based on your admissions application. Then you would be advised of any scholarships in your admissions decision. Um, and so those scholarships are up to and including full tuition. So if you remember the last slide, um, you should anticipate though that even if you get a full tuition scholarship, um, you should um, anticipate being able to pay for the other associated living expenses. And then we also have need-based aid. So we do not take the FAFSA currently, but we do have need-based grants for, for families who qualify. Um, so if you'd like to apply for the need-based aid, you can apply via the CSS profile. 
So another one of the really unique aspects of being an applicant um, to Duke Queen Sean University is that you have the opportunity to possibly travel to China um, as a part of the admissions process. So um, for 2018 and 2019, we invited all of our admitted students from around the world to the campus in Kunshan for our admitted um, international student experience. And they came to Quinjon and we helped with um, travel costs and costs while they were in China. And they were able to explore the Duke Kunshan campus, um, connect with professors and, and other future classmates, go to sample classes, explore the local area, and just learn more about Duke Kunshan. I will note that unfortunately in spring 2020, we did have to move the event online, but we really are hoping that travel restrictions and, um, you know, uh, safety will allow us to be able to welcome students back to campus again um, in the future as soon as we can, um, given the circumstances of the pandemic. So. I've given you so much information at this point. I know it can be overwhelming. So I just like to stop here and show these two really gorgeous pictures um, that kind of help reinforce the main takeaway from this presentation, which is Duke Kunshan University allows you to study on two campuses. So here is our hallmark, um, the Duke Chapel at Duke University. And here is um, what I think is probably our most distinctive building on the Duke Kunshan campus, which is called the Water Pavilion. And you would study on each of these campuses um, in both China and the US and you would earn two degrees. And then again, if you remember anything else from this presentation, remember how um, this opportunity can really open up your world and it can allow you to live and learn and explore China and the rest of the world. Here are some pictures of our current students, um, you know, enjoying the food in China, um, you know, traveling throughout China, going into Shanghai. On the right here, we have one of our students in, in who took the long weekend and went to Bali. And so if all of this has made you really excited about the possibility of attending a school like Duke Kunshan, we invite you to apply via the common application. Our application is open. Um, we do have a, an early decision deadline, which is quickly approaching. It is November 2nd, and that is a binding decision. So that is a, a great um, option if you know that Duke Kunshan is your number one choice and that if you were to be admitted, you would commit to attending. We also have that regular decision deadline, which is non-binding, um, which is January 4th. So um, our requirements for your application are um, just the regular common application portions and essays, and then we require your school report, high school transcripts, um, counselor evaluation, two teacher recommendations, and then I do want to note that we are test optional this year. Um, if you do have an SAT or an ACT score that you would like to submit, you can submit it, but please know that we are being sensitive to the fact that um, the pandemic has made it, has made barriers for students to um, have sit for those tests. So um, we are test optional this year. Um, another great next step, if you want to learn more about Duke Kunshan, see even more of our really beautiful campus, and then talk to a current student, um, is you can register for a virtual campus tour, um, which would be led by one of our current students. So if you want to take out your iPhone and just kind of take out the camera function and hover over this QR code, it will take you straight to our registration page um, where you can register for that virtual tour. So we're winding down to the end of the presentation here. And I just really like to end on this slide because it shows a picture of 
all of our admitted students that attended the International Admitted Student Experience in spring of 2019. So like I said, we flew them from all of the, over the world to our Kunshan campus. And I think it's, I, I was actually there personally with them. And it was so amazing to meet so many um, unique and just so accomplished students from all over the world. And um, many of them joined us and are now part of the Duke Kunshan community. Um, so to learn more, you can also follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then I personally recommend our YouTube channel. We have a couple of current students who have made day in the life videos that really give you a good sense of what it's like to actually be a student there. You can also email us at internationaladmissions at dukekunshan.edu.cn. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to pass it back off to the um, OACAC facilitator now, and um, she will close the session. Thank you all again so much for joining us today. Once you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear on your screen. As a reminder, there will be a recording of this session on oacac.org and also on the website you can explore and sign up for more sessions. Thank you all again and we hope that you have a great day. Thank you, Caitlin. Bye-bye.